Hi, hello everyone. How are your friends? Hope you are all very fine. I am also doing very well. Myself Dev Kumar, today I stand before you to discuss some of the basic fundamental English grammar. Actually, there will be a series of five videos. Among these five videos, I would like to start the first topic today that is parts of speech. Already you might have heard about the parts of speech, but let us once again look back, rewind this topic because as it is very useful and fundamental topic, today I would like to begin this five series with parts of speech. Let us start friends. Our first topic is parts of speech. As you already heard about uh, parts of speech, we all know that there are eight parts of speech in English. We will try to name them. There are eight parts of speech. They are number one, noun and then number two pronoun and then number three verb and number four adverb and number five adjective and number six preposition and number seven conjunction and number eight interjection observe these last two the seventh and eighth the students most of the students may get confused with the spellings of this seven and eight the seventh one is conjunction whereas the eighth one is interjection so most of the students get confused that conjunction and they will read eighth one as interjunction but it is not interjection it is interjection okay please make a note let us start with the first one that is noun the first one noun what is a noun a noun is a naming word all the things, persons, places, living beings, feelings, qualities that contain names will come under noun. So the definition of a noun is, a noun is a naming word. A noun is a naming word. Generally, who will contain the names? persons so first names of persons names of places names of things and animals and even you can write names of feelings and qualities also let us write some examples for nouns first names of persons you can take any names Raghu Prince, names of places, America, England, and the names of things, you may take anything, chalk piece or bench or board, whatever thing it may be, it will come under now. And then animals names, let us write some animals names, leopard, Cheetah, Panther. So, all the names of animals will come under noun. To remember nouns, very simply, I will tell you a simple trick. Whatever you see, whatever you notice around you are nouns. Whatever 
you see in your premises or not suppose i can able to see this board i can able to see the camera i can able to see the fan i can able to see the bench so all these are nouns whatever we see through our eyes whatever we notice the things the persons places animals whatever it may be all the things that we can see through our eyes are nouns so it is very easy point to remember or to identify the noun so this is very simple way and coming to types of nouns so there are many types of nouns uh, like uh, proper nouns common nouns compound nouns concrete nouns material nouns abstract nouns still there are many types but we will take separate video separate lesson for that about uh, types of nouns but let us finish simple explanations of these eight for today and uh, each each one we will discuss in the next video or next class so this is about noun simply to remember whatever we can see whatever whatever we can observe through our eyes in our surroundings in our society will come under nouns and the second one is pronoun do you think is there any difference between noun and pronoun some of you may say yes or some of you may say no but i will say there is no difference between noun and pronoun because nouns and pronouns are always the same with exception in one difference that is nouns contain names whereas pronouns do not contain names remaining are same all places persons things animals or nouns in the same way all places persons things and other things are pronouns also but in nouns we use name in pronouns we do not use name that is the only difference between nouns and pronouns let us see the definition of pronoun what is a pronoun a pronoun is used instead of a noun a pronoun is used instead of a noun simply it takes it takes the place of the noun it is very important point a pronoun takes the place of the noun to understand better let us see some examples example first one Mr Rakesh is a dance master Mr Rakesh is a dance master now we all know Mr Rakesh is a noun because it is a naming word it contains name now i will write one more statement he is a dance master he is a dance master did you observe any difference between these two statements in first statement i used a certain particular name mr rakesh is a dance master whereas in second statement i just used he instead of rakesh in the second statement he refers to mr rakesh only so here instead of mr rakesh i used he so this this is what the definition a pronoun is used instead of a noun it takes the place of the noun observe very well here the pronoun he took the place of the noun mr rakesh so this is what pronoun looks like there is no difference however there is one difference that is in noun we use names exact certain particular names whereas in pronouns we don't use names and uh, let us consider some more examples for pronouns so i am writing a list of pronouns here he him she her i me they them it that so all these words are said to be pronouns especially personal pronouns except it and that there are many types of pronouns also 
but we are going to look only two types of pronouns today because these two types of pronouns will again come in our as usual academic textbook syllabus so there are many types of pronouns like personal pronouns reciprocal pronouns reflexive pronouns demonstrative pronouns relative pronouns like that but we are going to focus we have to focus on two types of pronouns the first one is relative pronouns and the next one is demonstrative pronouns so i will write here types of pronouns there are many types but we are going to look about only two types of pronouns here the first one is relative pronouns what are relative pronouns what are relative pronouns relative pronouns are the words which stand for the nouns before them i will write the definition here relative pronouns are the words they are the words which stand for the nouns before them relative pronouns are the words which stand for the nouns before them and moreover who which that where are said to be relative pronouns so observe carefully who which where that whose and whom these are said to be relative pronouns if you observe carefully there are some wh words are also there but wh words will come under even interrogative pronouns also but here they are relative pronouns now let us understand the definition as i have already told the definition of relative pronouns relative pronouns are the words which stand for the nouns before them to understand the definition let us consider an example example number 1 this is the shirt which i bought in london if you observe which is the relative pronoun here which is the relative pronoun we can find which here so if you observe carefully which first observe the first half of the statement this is the shirt now i placed relative pronoun after the noun shirt now i bought in london what i bought in london shirt so shirt is a noun and this which relative pronoun stands for the shirt and the relative pronoun adds extra information for the noun before them and this is what the definition relative pronouns are the words which stand for the nouns before them the second half of the statement is about the noun before the relative pronoun so definition is very clear relative pronouns always supports the nouns before them and it gives extra information about the nouns or pronouns before them in the same way i will write some more examples he is our new teacher he is our new teacher who is standing there who is standing there here if you observe carefully who is the relative pronoun who is the relative pronoun observe the word before who it is a teacher and it is a noun and the remaining sentence stands or supports the teacher who is standing there teacher so who is a relative pronoun and it supports it gives extra information about the teacher so again the definition has been fulfilled relative pronouns are the words that stand for the nouns before them so it is giving extra information about the teacher in this statement this sentence is extra information for shirt and in this statement it is extra information about the teacher so if you use any relative pronoun the rule is same relative pronouns always supports adds gives extra information about the nouns before them even if you can frame 
sentences with the remaining relative pronouns so your task for today is frame some more statements using these relative pronouns but do remember one thing relative pronouns are placed always nouns or pronouns only and who is used always after persons which is used after places or things where is used after places that is used after things whose and whom are used after persons please do remember this rule so this is first type of pronouns and the next second one is demonstrative pronouns demonstrative pronouns have you ever heard the name demonstrative demonstrative word meaning is to showcase something to point out something so the definition of demonstrative pronouns is demonstrative pronouns to point out a certain thing or person to point out a certain person or thing to understand better i will consider some examples now so the words this that these and those are considered as demonstrative pronouns if you observe carefully i will write i will use these words in sentences i don't like this book if you observe carefully i don't like this book in this statement this is a demonstrative pronoun because we have written already here i don't like this book so we are point out we are pointing out a certain book this book we are just showcasing the particular book this book that book you can write same same statement using that also i don't like that book so we are pointing out certain book and even this i have already seen or i have already read these books i have already read those books so you can use uh, these words in sentences like that so demonstrative means to point out certain thing i have sit yesterday in that bench you can show like that you can point out that certain bench by using demonstrative pronoun so these are two important pronouns that you will get again in your academic course as part of our grammar especially for 9th and 10th class students this relative and demonstrative pronouns will come again in your textbooks also so please do remember and practice some more statements using demonstrative pronouns as well as using relative pronouns this is home task given to you coming to the third one among the eight parts of speech the third one is verb so what is a verb a verb is a word that refers to a work or an action a verb is a word that refers to a work or an action sometimes verbs refer to a state also i will explain later about state so verb is a word that refers to a work or an action every day we may do many works we brush every day we eat every day we sleep every day and we read we observe we play all these works will come under verb simply verb is nothing but work all works are verbs and all verbs are of course works so eating is a work drinking is a work reading is a work looking is a work observing is a work so all works are simply verbs just now as i have mentioned not only the physical works there are three types of verbs especially actually the definition of verb is it is a word that refers to a work or an action here there are three types of works or three types of actions they are uh, the first one is physical works please be cautious the first one is physical works 
and the second one is mental works and the third one is state to be these are the three types of works first one physical works eating playing swimming all these are physical works because if somebody does that work we can see physically with our eyes we can observe we can see directly with our eyes the works which we can see directly if somebody does those works are physical works i will write here examples play swim etc coming to the mental works see observe is observe a work which we can see manually or physically we cannot see and one more verb think one more verb guess so all the verbs of this kind are mental works because we cannot see those works physically if somebody does these works if i observe you cannot see that if i think you cannot see that if i guess you cannot see that but if i play you can see if i swim you can see that so this is the difference between physical works and mental works and third one it is very important the state to be here we can consider all helping verbs like am is are let us consider some examples to understand better the third one example one i am a teacher i am a teacher here what is the verb am am is the verb here see please do remember one thing without verbs we cannot write at least one sentence in english if you observe any textbook english books or newspapers or any material that contains that is written in english we cannot write any sentence without verb so every sentence should contain must contain verb so in this statement the verb is am so here am is not a physical work am is not a mental work but here am is a state in which state am i i am a teacher it indicates the state suppose if i ask you a question where are you i am in my home so here in your answer the verb is am where are you consider the second example like or else where is your friend he is in his house he is in his house here is is considered as verb and what is the meaning of is here is is not a physical work is is not a mental work but is is the state of your friend where is he he is in his house so these are three types of works three types of actions so simply what i would like to conclude about the verb is a verb is a work simply all the works that we do every day are also works and coming to the types of verbs now based on the category the verbs are divided into many types but we are going to see two types now types of verbs number 1 auxiliary verbs and number 2 main verbs as i already mentioned in the beginning we have a series of five videos among these five we have this topic also auxiliary verbs so i would like to discuss this in our next video i will let us focus about main verbs now main verbs are of two types again first one is regular verbs and second one is irregular verbs regular verbs and irregular verbs 
let us consider some examples to understand better about the regular verbs and irregular verbs so first regular verbs let us consider an action play play is a physical action it is a verb now if you observe the three forms of play here v1 indicates present tense and v2 indicates past tense and v3 indicates past participle even if you can add v4 also it is present progressive present progressive form is known as v4 form so the v2 of play is played and v3 is also same and v4 is it is ing form so play becomes play if you observe carefully we just added ed to form second form and third form let us consider one more verb dance the second form of dance is danced and third form is danced and the present progressive form is dancing and if you consider another verb look the v2 form of look is looked and v3 form is also looked and present progressive that is v4 form is looking if you observe carefully the pattern here adding ed or d is repeated if you want to frame second form and third form of these first forms we are adding ed or sometimes d so it follows a regular pattern and such type of verbs are called regular verbs so the definition of regular verbs is very simple the second form v2 v3 forms are formed by adding d or ed to the first form of the verbs such type of verbs are called regular verbs so make a list of regular verbs so try to write at least 20 examples after seeing the video irregular verbs are formed with no rules here we have a rule for regular verbs just we added d or ed to the first form and thus we have framed second and third form but whereas regular verbs it has no rule every verb is different if you transform that into v2 and there will be no rule if you transform the same verb into v3 it follows totally no rule now let us focus on regular verbs the second type of verbs is regular verbs irregular verbs now the point of discussion is irregular verbs so already we know about regular verbs they are formed by adding d and ed to make v2 and v3 form now irregular verbs let us consider some more examples to understand better v1 v2 v3 and v4 present past past participle and present progressive forms so first observe the verb go what is the past tense of go it becomes went if it turns into past tense and then past participle form is gone and then present progressive how to frame present progressive just adding ing to the first form so go becomes going so if you observe the pattern here no pattern is repeated like uh, regular verbs in regular verbs we have seen dance 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 v2 and v3 are all same for every verb but here v1 is different v2 is different and v3 is different there is no particular rule being followed here to frame v2 form and v3 forms observe some more examples it is no the past tense of no is new and the past participle form of no is known and then present progressive form is knowing see if you observe carefully there are no rules same in between a single verb v1 v2 and v2 to v3 there is no such rule repeated and observe compare go with new 
here v2 is framed with no rule here also v2 is framed with no rule we do not follow any certain rule to frame v2 and v3 for every verb it will be distinctive very different so this is irregular verbs let us consider some more examples so think bring buy so all these are irregular verbs the second form of think is thought and third form also thought uh, bring three forms brought and brought again by it becomes bought and bought so we are not following or we are not repeating any pattern here so such type of verbs are to be treated as irregular verbs this is second type of verbs the first type as i already mentioned auxiliary verbs it is also called as helping verbs which will be discussed in the part of our five series videos I think uh, next video will be on pronouns and uh, irregular regular verbs. So wait for that. But do remember the rules of regular verbs and irregular verbs. Auxiliary verbs which is the most important topic will be discussed later.